Okay, we're going to pick up a study here. Let me just do a little ex explanation. My wife's in the hospital, and when we go through the chapters of the Bible, we're in 1 Chronicles 29. It's our family Bible study. And right now, we can't continue as a family being a hospital, and there's no room to set up. And, you know, right now she's, you know, in pain and drugs. And when she's able to be with her senses and we can be in the room and we'll pick up our Bible study. But between then and now, this may be some topics. Maybe we'll pick up some wet clothes, some outlines. But today, something that should not be addressed. And something I am not going to go into the scientific data. I'm not going to go into realms of psychology. I am not going to go into colleges and schools. I am going to give you what God has to say. Now the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made and we're made by a God of the Bible, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, who has established one nation of people above all nations of people, Israel. And what we're going to look at today is a subject that I would have never thought we would have to talk about. And it's male and female. And you've got idiots today running around with a, with a diploma, high school and college, who cannot tell the difference between male and female. And without the Bible, I can sum up the whole situation and one thing. I can go down to the hardware store and get me a full length mirror and set it up on the wall or back of a door. And I can get a male and a female in that room in front of that mirror and tell them to take off their clothes. And I will say males have that part of the body, the female don't have that part of the body. Now, when it comes to like breast, okay, you know, it's different size. That's not, but I'm trying to be clean. You take a male and a female and stand them in front of, the, uh, front of the mirror, looking at the mirror face forward, from the belly button down. God has given man and woman, male and female, identity. And you are sick society in sin. You have been grown up to believe that we come from pond scum. And came up from pond scum to cells. And from cells we became jellyfish. And we became fishes. And the fishes walked on the sea. And then we became gorillas. And then we got a hold of an of, of electric razor without electricity and shaved our bodies. And now we're naked apes. And we have something called the evolution of man, but we do not have the evolution of woman. In Evolution, I feel sorry for you because between a husband and wife, in evolution, there is no talk of sex. And yet in the pages of the Bible, God has given a husband and a wife the ability, what God calls the marriage bed, to know your wife and to know your husband. And when I'm not going into the realm of evolution, because I'll tell you right now, if evolution is getting better and better and better and better behind me, I forget how the distance is, but not very far behind me, four blocks maybe, there would not be a place for my wife to be sitting in a hospital bed if evolution is getting better. You see these right here? You see those eyeglasses? I didn't wear those until I was maybe 20, 21 years old. I'm not getting better. 
And any professor gets up in any classroom and says, we're getting better, and has a cane or glasses or a hairpiece, or has to go home and take medicine. You are a liar. And you'll stand before a holy and righteous God as a liar. Big bang. That's at the end, Peter says. So this male and female thing. See what the Bible has to say. In Genesis chapter 2. We're going to get it from the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth, and hands, and feet, and of God the Father. Evolution God of the Big Bang has no eyes, no ears, no nose, no... Evolution of, of, of mankind has no written documentation. He gets to the rocks, to the shells, to the bones, and they're all out of whack. And he has to put in bones. He has to shape bones. And that's the history of evolution to prove their lie. And yet the Bible, the King James Bible, is exact, is the word of God. Now, there are modern Bibles out there. They have been changed by man who has rejected God as man has rejected God to say, I've got another gender, another identity. These people who don't know male and female, they don't know God. And they want to get away from God. And they've been taught evolution. This is the product of the public school system of teaching evolution. We're trying to go better and better. As your end will be without Christ to fall off into hell and to burn forever. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. That's the first human body part mentioned in the Bible, nostrils. That breathe is the first time breathe showed up. That dust is the first time dust showed up. And form, that's the first time form has showed up. Into his nostrils the breath, that's the first time breath shows up. Of life. Of life. In the Bible, life comes from the Lord God. It don't come from an explosion. It don't come from frogs. They're unclean, according to Revelation. Life comes from God and God made man. You got a problem with that? You take it up with God when you stand before him at either judgment. If you're saved and you're an imbecile, you'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ and burn up your works. Not you, your works. If you're an idiot and you want to believe and you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will say you will be prepared as you stand before Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh at the at the great white throne judgment. You will be proved to be an idiot. And you will find out that moment when you stand before God, you'll find out there he is. There's the creator. You're not going to stand before a big bang. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Even though you don't believe him. God is the author of life. Public school system, you are lying to the children. And then you wonder why you got a messed up public school system. You know why they're messed up now in the churches and churches are getting just as messed up? Because you're lying to the people. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So here it is. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul by God no evolution in the beginning God created the heavens and earth what else you say is wrong and you will be found wrong when you stand before the Creator one day and with verse 15 this and the Lord God took the man man tries to take God we're not going to get into the, you know, uh, the eating of the tree and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We're not going to, that's not our study now. Verse 18 of chapter 2. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. So Mr. Evolutionist, 
Where did the woman eight come from? Did she more progress and lost her hair before the man ape? Or did a man ape lose his hair before the woman ape? Did a woman ape not have a hard time trying to find a date because he was too hairy? Did a man have a hard time trying to get the woman ape because she was too hairy? Hairy situation. God looked at the man that he created and said, you know what? He's all alone. Why wasn't there two big bangs? A male bang and a female bang. And God said, I will make a help meet for him. I'm not going to make a slave. I'm not going to make a stepping stone. I'm not going to make someone that's under him. I'm going to make a help meet for him. And then Adam names all the animals. In verse 21. You say, you believe this? I believe this with all my mind, heart, soul. I absolutely reject a big bang. I absolutely reject. I don't even believe there were dinosaurs. I don't know. I don't see dinosaurs in the Bible. I see whales, pigs, cattle, all kinds of animals in the Bible. You ever think when you go to those museums, those, those bones that got set up, maybe that they've been tampering with those bones? Look at your monkey men bones that they have lucy and all those bones look at the story of those bones file shavings added parts two parts of two different animals just to prove i'll believe god it's not evolution that is giving me the peace and love and care while my wife's in the hospital it's the holy spirit and the lord god verse 21 if i didn't say that lord god you're gonna have a lot of sarcastic remarks by me on this one and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. You believe that? Absolutely. And he slept. Some say death. As far as I know the Bible, as far as I would look at the Bible, I would say death too. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead of the, instead thereof. Oh, come on. You believe that? You believe that God opened up Adam, took that rib? A lot better than the crap you believe. Out of nothing, here we are. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Bang! Here we are. Rather believe in God, something, than nothing. Look at it, nothing. Evolution is nothing that became something. And you die and you become nothing. Something wrong. God made me... I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. When I die, I'll be absent from this body, present with the Lord. If you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be swimming in the lake of fire that burns forever. I'll take God's account more than no one's account. Evolution has nothing, no one, absolutely anything to be in their beginning. You say, where was God? God's always been God. Your nothing's always been nothing. Think about it. Sit back and think about nothing, here we are. Or God, and here we are. And the rib which the, which the Lord God, Lord God, had taken from man, remember the man that he created, made he a woman and brought her onto the man. Okay, look at that. We got a woman, we got a man. And notice the man came first. And from the man became a woman. We got a man, we got a woman. Nothing in between. We don't have cavemen. We don't have apes. They were before. Apes were about 19 and 20. They came up and Adam said ape. Adam said gorilla. Adam said monkey. Adam said whatever names the apes are. He never had an ape or a monkey or gorilla come up to him. He said grandpa. He never had a orangutan come walk him, Dad. Because he knew God was his father. God was his father. Stay in Genesis, but go to Luke. I'll, I'll, go to Luke, chapter, it's either two or three. One of those chapters, I know it's in there, but just which one? Luke, chapter, it's two or three. Three. Pages bend over. Wait a minute, hold on. My pages bend over. Okay. 
chapter 3, I believe it is. Chapter 3, verse 38. Last part of Luke 3, stay in Genesis, hope you did. Which was the son of Enos, which is the son of Seth, which is the son of Adam, which is the son of God. Adam's father was God. How about you? <laughs> you be a monkey's uncle. I'll be a child of God through Jesus Christ. Back to Genesis. <laughs> you act like that when you're drunk. <laughs> Don't bring a teacher an apple. Bring her a banana. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones. Inside. Evolution bones are in the dirt. Dead. Dead bones. Dead bones, dead bones, dead bones. God, alive bones. Man and woman standing, and Adam looks at the woman and says, that's, that's bone of my bone. And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Man named that woman. He has the meaning of woman. Because she was taken out of man. That helped. <coughs> Excuse me. That helped me that God made came from Adam. Adam says woman because she came from man. Adam's is the son of God. The woman of the man. Now watch the marriage show up. Watch the marriage that is defiled and cankered and destroyed today. Therefore shall man, shall a man, any man, any man, leave his father and mother, a male and a female, uh-oh, and shall cleave, that means come together. By the way, the bone of my bones, see that bones in verse 23? Bone and bones, that's the first time those words show up. And it's a relation to a man and a woman, to a husband and wife, Adam and Eve, not something buried in the ground. Your bone, your bones of a level of evolution is a dead animal. My bone and my bones of the King James Bible was a man and woman that were alive, made by God. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, that's the first father and mother, and shall cleave that means join to the world cleaver you know you chop things up no cleave you come together you're as one one unto his wife and they shall be one flesh and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed it doesn't say and they were both hairy one day the hair dropped off they were made naked. Adam took one look at his naked wife and said, she is not a man, she's a whoa man. They didn't need a full length mirror. Adam, when that woman came to him, said she is different and she is a woman. How about that? How about that? You believe the Bible? I believe the Bible with all my soul. I have to. Now look at chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve. That's the marriage bed. We are within two chapters of the man that God made and the woman that God made of the man. And we see a marriage with no wedding ceremony, no bridesmaids, no best men, no family to bride, no family to the groom, and we see them marriage bed together, and they produce the children. And, we're, and, and she, uh, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. So God made that man. That God made that woman, and they come together with their sexual parts. And by them sexual parts coming together, called the marriage bed, which God made entertaining and fun for the man and the woman. And produces another life. 
And I can go into abortion, which I'm not going to, but that life was given by God through Adam and Eve and passes on to their children, their children, their children, to the children today. And the fact is, if you have a male and you had another male, they can't come together to, to know each other, to have children. If you have a female and another female and they come to know each other, they can't produce or conceive. That's an evolution God. You just take your bones and die and get buried in the ground. Someday somebody will dig you up. But when God takes his man and takes his woman, and he takes their bones and puts them together, he produces a life. Life again. Conceived and bear Cain. Cain was life. Adam and Eve was life. That's simple. So we have sex as a biological difference between ma male and female. I got one over here. They, they have a thing, gender. Gender, again, is a subclass with a grammatical class, noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, and language, blah, blah, blah. We don't want that. We want, the, it's a sexual sense of the difference between a male and a female. That's what we want. And you got another word that has been added recently, gender identity. I know what gender identity is. You want me to explain it? There's a full-length mirror. You, the man, you, the woman, take off both your clothes. Look, that's gender identity. There's a penis. There's a vagina. That's gender identity. And God made it like that. God made the penis, God made the vagina. God made the man, he made the woman. It's that simple. So let's look in the Bible. Let's look at first gender. Let's look at all the two places that gender shows up in the Bible. Are you ready? Leviticus 19.19. Ooh, the first gender in the Bible. Leviticus 19.19. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to run Bible verses to prove to you what God has said. Yea, has God said. That's the words of Satan, Genesis 3. But I'm going to use it to go against Satan in his teaching of the stupidity that's being taught today. We haven't even got the male and female yet. We'll get to that. Luke 19. Oops, one more page. Luke 19, 19. Ye shall keep my statute. Talking to Jewish people. Jewish nation. Leviticus. Laws written to the Jewish people. No church. No church. No Gentiles. Ye shall keep my statute. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. That's the first time gender shows up in the Bible, two places. That gender is coming together, mixing with. You cannot have your cattle with horses. You can't have your cattle with sheep. You can't have your cattle with pigs. Gender identity in the Bible, according to Leviticus 1919. Remember, let me put my let me put my educated cap on. That's a cow. That's a horse. That's a pig. That's a dog. And don't put them together. I take off my little cap and gown now. Number two of gender, Second Timothy. Ooh, we got going to New Testament for this one. Whoa, Second Timothy. You mean gender? The great identity can only be found in two places of the Bible. 2 Timothy 2, 23. Now this would have to prove in the New Testament of the gender identity problem. Yeah. Genesis 2, 23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Whoa, well, there's your school system. 
Those are the people that come up to you in the public ministry. Oh, uh, where did King get his wife from? Ready? Knowing that they do gender strifes. Oh, <laughs> come to be is as a result thereof. There's your gender identity in the Bible. Gender is that's a cow, that's a that's a that's a horse, that's a dog, that's a pig, that's a sheep, that's a cow, uh, you know. And then gender identity in the New Testament is don't bring about problems with stupid questions and questions you can't learn from. How's that for our gender lesson? But we have better things. Can't bring it back up on it. So let's move to male and female. Back to Genesis 127. And you're only going to find these two. That's it. I don't know, and I'm not going to look in. I'm not going to get bothered to all the time. I don't want to know what gender identity that you have thought about in your wicked heart. And I'm not going to go into the nonsense of all the different things that you have come up with so you can get a bigger paycheck from losers who are going to pay for your documentation of a, of a certificate that ain't going to do you no good. I'm going to do a documentation that has value that Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. In Genesis 1.27, God the creator, God the creator said in verse 27, 1.27, so God created man. <gasps> Oh, my monkey's uncle, what did he say? Oh, give me a red pill. That man is preaching. God, get him out. Put a little safety zone in the college that he can only talk over there and not tell people about God. No! God created man. It's an iconic book. You got to change your textbooks every two to three years. You've got gaps. We have no gaps. Prepare to meet thy God. So God, uh, so God created man in His own image. Body, soul, and spirit. We do not look like God, and God does not look like us. Especially after the fall. We are different. Our faces are different from the male and females. My face is a lot different from African faces. And African faces are different from Oriental faces. And Oriental faces are different from European faces. And the faces of America. Phew. So God created man in his own image. Body, soul, and spirit. And the image of God he created him. Man. Male and female. That's the first. That's the first place for the male, and the first place for the female. Created he them. Got that? Got it? Got it? Get it? There it is. Have you got it? So God created man, male and female. Created he them. God put it down twice. God made sure you knew it was God that made man and female, man and woman, male and female. Adam and Eve. There was no mother. Adam and Eve did not have belly buttons. They were not birthed. They were not born. God created them. And he made them male and female. And if you are anything else, you are defying the God of the Bible who will judge you as a sinner. 
Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and if thou shalt confess thy sin, he is worthy in... 1 John 1, 9. I don't want to misquote this verse. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Genesis 5, 2. Hopefully, we're going to get 19 documentations. 19 documentations about male and female in the Bible. Genesis 5, 2. Male and female created he God them. And blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created. You know why a woman takes her husband's name off from her father's name when she gets married? Genesis 5, 2. Two. God called that woman, that female, hi Adam, hi Mrs. Adam, Genesis 5-2, Genesis 6-19, Genesis 6-19, which will just fly right along now, he's talking to Noah, and every living thing of all flesh, all flesh, animals and humans, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark. To keep them alive with thee. Thou shalt, and they shall be male and female. 7 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven, the male and the female. And of the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and the female. 7-3, of fowls, the birds, also the air by seven, the male and the female. Did you get it? 7-9, and they went two and two into the ark, uh, the, to Noah into the ark, the male and the female. You know what happened in Noah's ark? Uh, uh, Noah did not go get those animals. God brought those animals. And when those animals are lining up to go in that ark, you got... Male chimpanzee, female chimpanzee, chimpanzee, yeah, chimpanzee, can't say it. You got male horse, you got female horse. You got male dog, you got female dog. You got male robin, you got female robin. There's no in-betweens with God. Uh, 7.16, Genesis 7.16. Genesis 7.16. And they went in, went in, male and female of all flesh. Leviticus 3.1. I'm just showing you what God did, what God has done, and what God says. Genesis 3.1. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, he shall offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or a female. 3.6. And if his offering of the sacrifice of peace offering unto the Lord be of the flock, male or female. So if it's a herd group of animals, it's male and female. If it's a flock of animals, it's a male, it's a female. 16, 716. Wait a minute. Seven, where am I right now? I'm in three, three, one. Oh yeah, three, six, all right, 12, seven. I got mixed up there. 12, seven, Leviticus 12, seven. And you're going to probably get tired of me just hearing. But this is the male and female of the Bible. 19 of them. Chapter 12, verse 7, Leviticus. And who shall offer it before the Lord, that's the Creator, and made atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law of her human, human mother, a mother that's given birth, context of chapter 12, that has born, okay, here's her child, that has born a male or female. A woman gives birth according to the Bible, according to the law of the Jewish people. She gives birth to a male or female, nothing else. I think I'm something else. I think you've been listening to somebody, someone else, too long and not listening to God. 
chapter 27, verse 5. You've been educated out of male and female. You have been stupefied to believe that there's other gender identity. I just want to make myself a name among the world, because if today, if I say I have a gender identity, all the media will come and take my pictures and listen to me, and put me on the front page, and they'll put me on the television show. Hi, world! But if I sit in the church and I listen to a Bible-believing preacher, and if I do what God tells me to do, I just may be a noble and sit in that pew, and the preacher won't call my name on me, and the preacher may not mention me. I may not get love and care from the people. But if I be different, Genesis 27, 7, and shall be 60 years old and above, if it be a male... Then thy estimation shall be 15 shekels, and for a female, 10 shekels. Now, with the dedication, there was an estimation for the males, and there was a different estimation for the female. No other, no other, no other, no other. 27.6. And if it be a month old, even five years old, even the estimation shall be of the male five shekels of silver. And for the female, thy estimation shall be three shekels of silver. Seven. Twenty-seven, seven. And it shall be sixty years... Oh, we already read that one. So, have we got that? Have we got that? Numbers chapter five, verse three. Up to... I was born September 6, 1968, and any form, any form, growing up, they would ask you sex, male or female. And then they added another box. I prefer not to answer box. Male, female, I, I don't want to answer. I'm too embarrassed to say I don't know what I am. <laughs> I don't know what I am. I can't tell. Check that box. <laughs> And then now I am told, I, I have been told by a good friend that uh, going to a doctor's office that there is multiple check boxes. Really? Are you that stupid? I try every I try every day to use the word stupid because stupid is a word that's not used much. Like it or not, but I'm sarcastic and all that. I believe the word stupid should be used daily. And when you're talking about, I don't know what I am, and I stand in front of a mirror with no clothes on, I still can't tell what I am. You are stupid. You need a stupid button. You need a stupid sign. You need a stupid hat. You need to get out of the stupid school that you're in. By the way, anybody else says, other than male and female, you're going against the Bible. I don't care. The Bible's written by man. You'll find out one day we stand before God because the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Trying to help you out. Trying to show you what the God, the creator of us says. He says, male and female. Numbers 5, 3. Both male and female shall ye put out. Without the can, shall ye put them out. So anybody's defiled, you're male or female defiled. You're no whatever you are undefiled. And when you have your operations to make yourself a female when you're a male, or you have an operation to make yourself a male that you were a female, that's totally wrong. That's sin. And a lot of people are going to get upset, and this video will probably get out there. Oh, oh, he's gender identity, homophobic, whatever it's called. No, I'm a Bible believing Christian under God, my Savior, Jesus Christ, who created us. And he says there's a male, and there's a female, and there's nothing in between, and there's nothing outside the line. I don't care what other men have sinned, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They are not God who is holy and righteous, and you are defiling the word of God. And I am telling you what God has said. 
God has said Deuteronomy 4.16. Now, he didn't say Deuteronomy 4.16, but we're going to read Deuteronomy 4.16. Are you ready? Deuteronomy 4.16. At least ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Have you ever been to an art gallery and they got statues and they got paintings? The, the David statue has a penis. When they draw or paint a picture of a woman, she's got breasts, she don't have a penis. That's a violation of the Bible, by the way making images and, and idols of the human body. But I guarantee pretty soon we're going to probably see an art. It'll probably have a, a, a nudie magazine of people who don't know what they are naked. That's going to be interesting. Because you have the body parts of a male or the body parts of a female, but you're going to classify it with whatever junk. Art. Art tells you and has told you over the years that's a male that's a female now i'm not talking about the art where you've got the nose and the belly button and the eyeball over it and the butt cheek and all that other kind of, that, that's not art i just offended somebody else now okay there's male and female. The males will be attracted to female. The females will be attracted to the male. Unless you've been educated. Unless you've been educated. Matt, uh, excuse me, Deuteronomy 7.14. 7.14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people, Israel. There shall be, I mean, excuse me, there shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Now, what's that male barren? I mean, you know, a female can be, she's unable to produce eggs or reproduce with the eggs that are in her. The male barren is he has no seed. He has not the ability to produce sperm. To produce life. And when we come to what this verse here is, the male has a penis and sperm, the woman has a vagina and eggs, and together they make a child, which we saw in Genesis 4, where Adam and Eve, where Adam knew Eve and she conceived and bare Cain. His seed, her eggs, came together. Now you can't get eggs and eggs together and make a baby. That don't work. You can't get the male seed and the male seed together. That don't do that just makes a mess. But in order to produce children, Genesis said a male and a female. Deuteronomy just said a male and a female. If you are a male and a male and a female and a female, you've got to adopt an apostle like. For your sodomy and your wickedness and whatever gender you want to defile God with. Matthew 19, 4. Matthew 19, 4. Oh, he's ruining my day. God will ruin your day. He says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. All right, you believe in the Lord Jesus. All right, I know what the Bible, what God has to say, than what man has to say. Man has lied to me. God has never lied to me. I've lied to God. God's never lied to me. He's incapable, un, un, unable, and will never and cannot ever tell the lie, the Bible says. 19.4. Now, 19.4, if you have a Bible that's red lettered, I have to make my own for the words of Christ. And you may not have a red lettered version by but if you don't and and others do you will see what we're going to read in matthew 19 4 red letter these are the very words of jesus christ god said in genesis male and female let's see what jesus christ said who is god 
Those Jehovah Witnesses don't believe that. He is God. So let's see what God, Jesus Christ, manifested in the flesh said. Matthew 19.4. And have you... Oh, wait a minute. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them in the beginning, Genesis 1, Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him, male and female created he them. That's what, that he made them in the beginning, made them male and female. My Jesus says I could be any identity you want. You got another Jesus that Paul wrote about to the Corinthians. You do not have the godly, biblical Jesus of the tribe of Judah that was virgin born, who was God manifest in the flesh. God manifest in the flesh said you're a male or you're female. That's it. I don't care what your professors say. They'll stand before me at the great white throne judgment one day. I have to give an account. Shall we try it again? Mark chapter 10, verse 6. Mark chapter 10, verse 6. Hey, trying to help you out. Trying to show you what God says. By the time you get the right words for one. Mark 10, 6. Red letter it again. So it's got to be Jesus speaking. But from the beginning of the creation, God, God, Jesus Christ is against your evolution. He says your evolution is a lie. God created Creation, God made them male and female. How's that? Galatians 3.28. Let's go ask Paul. This is the last place. Last time we're going to look at male and female. Some people lift Paul too high. I don't. I put him with a classification with, with uh, Moses, Jeremiah, and any man. Who has believed God, who has trusted God. But the last place, Galatians 3:28. Some of you, whew, he's done. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Jewish people, Gentile. There's neither bond or free. Neither there is neither male nor female. For ye are one in Christ Jesus. Now, God made the physical body a male and a female. Look in a mirror. You had a husband and wife, look in front of the mirror. You, there it is. But in reality, of God in the presence of his Christians falls right into Christians. As far as the realm of those who are the children of God. There is a classification of male and female, but th there's no prejudice with God. You could be a, a saved Jew. You could be a Gentile, uh, saved Gentile. You can be a, a man in jail with handcuffs saved, or you can be the policeman that put the handcuffs on you saved. You can be a male saved person or you can be the female saved person, but there's no in between. So, okay, maybe I've been overbearing with my words, maybe I've been a little sarcastic, maybe I've been a little mean. But to say that there's anything else but male and female is a sin. And you have rewritten the Bible. And us Bible believers who believe that people go in the Bible and they add and they subtract and they footnote are wrong. When they remove words, when they add words, or they put a footnote, it should be better rendered. Those are wrong. And so when you put the classification that there's a male, okay, that's right. When there's a female, Yes, that's right. And whatever other classification, I'm not even going to get into what they are. When you add those things, you are adding to the Bible, to the 19 places that I've, that I've read to you now, of male and female in the Bible. You have added to the Word of God. You have added to what the Creator did not make us. 
and you have sinned against the Lord, and behold, your sin will find you out. And you've got to be stupid to stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself without any clothes and say, that's not what I am. You are a dangerous person. You are incapable of going out into the workforce because if you cannot tell that this is an acid and this is not an acid, and you cannot tell a red light from a green light, you are a danger. Because you have not judged the proper thing. And people say, judge not, least you, least you be, I mean, well, no, they say judge not. The Bible says, judge not, least, uh, least you be judged. If you cannot judge that red, yellow, and green light, you have no business having a driver's license. And if you can't judge by a penis or a vagina, what else are you going to not be able to identify that could cost someone's life or some or injury or harm? You may not be able to identify poison from something that's good and then serve it at a party at your house or somebody you know. You are capable of my eyes of nothing. You have gone against the word of God. And friends, Christians, Bible believers, people are stuck through this video. People are saying, wow, that's interesting. It's only going to get worse. Today, I don't know who I am, male or female. They're going to come up with a lot more nonsense if the Lord tarries. It will get grosser. It will get weirder. They may even go in the realms where the Bible doesn't even have a... a uh, a stance or a stand. The Bible has a stand that we just read. 19 verses. Male and female. There's no other. The Bible puts a stance that a man and a woman, the marriage bed. If you're not married, it's fornication. If it's someone else's spouse, it's adultery. If it's the same sex, same man and man, woman with woman, it's called sodomy. It's an abomination. If, if you're with a human with a beast, it's called bestiality. That's an abomination, according to the Word of God. And what the last worst thing I could say is churches are buying into this garbage. Churches are now going to start and probably already have to say, it's okay with God. God loves you too. And I have lasting words to say, prepare to meet that God. And that God said, there's a male and female. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Confess your sins, repent, get right, get back to what the Bible says you are. 